Well, hey there, folks, and welcome back once again to the Hop House. It's Eddie here, uh, and we're going to do another beer review. As I say at the beginning of every video, and I'll say at the beginning of this one, if you've just found us here on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. It's the Hop House. We like hoppy beer. We like good house music. Uh, I actually did some videos on the house music side, and now we're back on the beer. Okay, so today we're going to do um, some beer reviews of some of these smaller 330 milliliter size cans of craft beer that you can find um, quite regularly uh, in supermarkets and whatnot. Um, so the first one we're going to review uh, is this one. I'll show you. It is this baby. It is, if the camera will pick that up, it's called Sorcery and it's a Session IPA. Uh, it doesn't actually tell you on the can there, apart from some diddly tiny writing there, who it is, but it's actually a company called Magic Rock. Uh, Magic Rock Brewing or Magic Rock Brewery. They're based in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. Yeah, another Yorkshire beer. Proper Yorkshire. And um, what can I say? Yorkshire breweries are smashing it out, especially on the craft brewery side of things. Think of Vocation, done a couple of Vocation beers, wonderful. Northern Monk, wonderful. Uh, Salt Beer, a uh, side project of Osset Brewery, wonderful they're getting out there into supermarkets now as the channel grows i will probably go into some real more niche craft beers um but i'm only just starting out i'm only a couple of months in so really i'm just going through stuff that you you can get easily at supermarkets and uh, in your in your deals whether it be four three for fiver or four for six pound uh, and this comes out at tesco in your four for six pound i think it's available at morrison's as well but I got this from Tesco, uh, four for six quid. Uh, and in the smaller stores from the Tesco Express, I think the three for five. Uh, the strength of it is 3.9% ABV. So it's not going to kick your backside if you have a few of these. It's more your best bitter sort of strength, 3.9%. But it does state it is a session IPA. And so it is so very sessionable at this strength. Right, so let's get it out into the glass and uh, get the appearance on it. I've got my little crafty... Sort of beer glass on. My mic's down here, so if you hear the can opening really loudly or me pouring the beer into the glass, I do apologise. Um, I've turned my boiler off. Um, I know it's getting, it's, even though I'm filming this on Good Friday, so it's Easter. Uh, we're supposed to be getting into spring, but apparently it's going to snow in the next few days. Uh, so the temperature's dropped, so I have, we have had the heating on, but I've turned it off because I have noticed the last some of the v reviews I've done. The boiler was really whirring away in the background, so I wanted to try and kill that background noise. Right, so into the glass she goes. Uh, it looks very light in colour, very light in colour in fact. A little bit hazy, I wasn't expecting it to be hazy, I have to say. Uh, I have had this before, but when I did have it before, uh, I drank it out of the can. So I didn't, I've never actually seen what this looks like before in the glass. Very light, very light. Um, Almost a blonde sort of pear. It looks a bit like pear cider. Uh, and I've got a light shining down here, which probably makes it look even lighter if I put it up there. No, it still is very, very, very light. Sort of pear cidery looking colour. Uh, light yellow. White head on top. It stopped hissing. It was hissing like a good one at first. Um, it is a bit murky, but there's no sign of actual yeast or sediment in the can. Uh, yeah, it looks good. It looks very light and palatable. Um, so we'll go ahead and get the nose in there. And we'll get the aroma. So it's time to give it a whiff and see what we can sniff. Tell you what. To say this is a 3.9% beer, that smells divine. It smells hoppy as hell. That is citrus and grapefruit in abundance, I have to say. Despite its low ABV, that smells absolutely terrific. That's, yeah, really grapefruit, really pungent grapefruit smells coming from that citrus grapefruit. A little bit of limey. I always kind of pick up lime as well as um, grapefruit on the citrus front. It's not as sweet as mango or a pineapple. It's definitely more bitter citrus. Right, my mouth's salivating because it knows what's coming. So... Bottoms up and down the old hatch. Whoa. 
do you know what that's divine that is sensational for a 3.9 percenter i could quite happily drink a lot of this and session on it it's a shame it's not in a bigger sort of can it's only in 330 mil um, i haven't had this one on on tap and magic rocks i've had their high wire their grapefruit pale ale oh um, i've only had that on tap though i've not had it in a can stand by for a review coming soon Yeah, I drank this at my mate's house and got around to DJ. Um, and we usually drink stuff either out the bottle or out the can. So I have had this out the can um, before, but I've never actually had it in a glass. I've never got the appearance before, but I was fully aware of how hoppy and smelly it was. But smelly in a good way. Yeah, so the taste really follows through from the smell. I mean, there's not much else I can say. It's... Uh, hoppy and citrusy it's quite bitter goes on the side of the tongue as usual with those kind of american hops i'd say there's american hops in this or maybe new zealand hops um there is a little bit of sweetness that runs through in the back end actually so the sweetness runs down the middle of the tongue more towards the end and it comes at the back there is bite at the back because i can taste it it's almost a sort of tarty citrus aftertaste that you get um I suppose if you bit into a grapefruit, you have to taste the tartness. That's what's on the back end. But there's a little sweet kick to sort of meet it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it was bittersweet. Sometimes I say beer is a really nice bittersweet. It's more bitter than sweet because the sweetness does come in at the end. Um, and I think it's a good thing that it does. Because it's quite tart, tart citrus aftertaste, that would sort of really dry your mouth out. Whereas a bit of sweetness comes in as well. And, and, and makes your saliva, it makes your mouth salivate, makes you want more. It's, it's a very Moorish beer. Excuse me. Um, the only problem is it's in a small can, so I've kind of already drunk half of it. I will say, one thing I will say, and I'll really give in its favour, is I have mentioned before on the channel, on some of the craft beers I've had, I've not got the flavour till about halfway down. This first drink was pow! It was almost Citra-esque, you know, the Oakham Citra, in how powerful it was in that first sip. So you really do get this from the first taste. Now have a look at it swirl around um, and look at the lacing on it. It looks absolutely fantastic. It looks really good. I'm a bit wary that there's a spotlight right there, so I'm trying not to do it too much under the spotlight. But it's a lovely looking beer. Look how it holds in the glass amazing if you like the lacing for those that love the lacing and um, in terms of would i drink it again hell yeah would i get it again hell yeah don't think they do this in the four packs um i know they do the high wire grapefruit pale ale grapefruit ipa they do that in a little four pack at uh, asda and i think at tesco but i'm not sure about this i've not seen it in a four pack i've only seen it in individual cans but part of the four for six quid range i'd quite happily buy a four pack of it though It was a really loud motorbike that just went past. Cheers for that, mate. I would quite happily drink lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of that. For a 3.9 percenter, it's not thin. I mean, it's not going to have the thickest sort of really oaty kind of thickness that you get from like a New England IPA because it's 3.9 percent. I don't really notice the malt much in it. Well, yeah, it comes in, sorry, the malt must come in at the aftertaste, but it's quite light malt. It's not giving you like a malty, salty, malty taste. Works really well. Right, so I'm gonna see what it does say here. Oh, it does say it contains oats. I would not pick that up at all. Maybe that's the bit of haze on it. Maybe it's probably what gives it the actual body that it's got for a 3.9%, probably is the oats in it. But I wouldn't have sort of necessarily said that was oaty. I'd just say that it was quite thick bodied for a 3.9%. lovely so it says on the can it contains barley oats oh that's what it says and then it says it in different languages it doesn't even say it's got pour carefully may contain sediment oh, so there you go i mean i know it's a bit hazy i didn't actually see any sediment floating around 
So there you go, yeah, it's a 3.9% hazy beer. Now when I drunk that before, like I said, I drunk it out of the can, I wouldn't have guessed it was hazy. I wouldn't, I would have thought it would have been a sort of clear see-through IPA, just really well bittered. Magic Rock brewing.com they are in Huddersfield now what I've heard and I'll say this uh, just quickly because as I've said on many videos I'm not a brewer and I don't work in the industry so I'm not a professional I just hear what I hear from certain beer reviews uh, certain beer groups sorry that I'm on Facebook and uh, I watched some of the more professional people than me that really know how they do their beer reviews um, so what I've heard through the grapevine, if you like, is that Magic Rock did get taken over. They were originally a small microbrewery based in the Huddersfield area of West Yorkshire. Now they've been taken over by one of the big bods. Probably should have researched it more before putting up this video, but I can't remember who took them over. So if you want to write that in the comments and it'll stop me from looking like an absolute bozo. Might be one of the big green companies like a Heineken or a Carl. I don't think it's Carlsberg. Maybe it's Heineken. Let's say it's Heineken just for the sake of argument. But they've been taken over by a big multi-corporation brewery, one of the big giants. However, they've left them alone. So what they've done is they've let them brew their stuff their way and not altered any ingredients or any recipes. Apologies for my boiler firing up. Uh, I thought I turned it off, but that might be my other half using the hot water. She may well be in, uh, I think she was washing her hair. I've got no air. So that might be what it is. So I apologize for the boil firing up. Hope it's not too loud and hummy in the background. Right, swirl it around, do one last taste, and then I'll tell you what I think. In fact, I'll just finish it off. Ooh. Two thumbs up from me. That, two thumbs up. It's great, it's lovely, brilliant. Magic Rock Sorcery, it's their lowest strength ABV, but it packs a punch. It's really bitter, it's really citrusy, it rolls down the side of the tongue like a good one, and then the sweetness comes down the middle of the tongue to join that tart aftertaste, to balance it off a bit, but it's still bitter at the back end. But it makes me do that a lot. And for 3.9% ABV, that is beautiful. And it's not going to knock your head off if you have quite a few cans of it. Two thumbs up from me. Please like, share, subscribe, share the love. And we'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now, people.